Hi everybody, Joel from RC Max UK here. Hope you're doing very well. Now in this video, I wanted to do a review on the Traxxas UDR. Now here it is just sitting next to my X-Max to give you an idea of size and a bit of comparison. And there's that legendary suspension action. Again, next to an eight scale short course truck. This That's an SC8E, quite a rare short course truck from Team Associated. And again, you can just see a bit of the scale and the size difference. So the UDR is a fair bit bigger than an ape scale, but a fair bit smaller than something like the X-Max, which of course is a monster truck. So looking at a few of the details here, you get some, you get some very nice details on the UDR. And that's what I'd say make it kind of stand out from other RC cars. It's very realistic looking. Mine was second hand. You can see a few of the marks and scratches on it here a few of the weak spots on the body. You get those dual shocks all round. So you've got eight shock absorbers all round, very plush suspension action. And of course you've got the figures inside, which add to that kind of scale realism and the scale look. You do get quite a durable kind of bumper setup at the front. Of course, with that massive body, that's what takes most of the, the punishment though. Although you've got also a very good rear bumper. There's a, a kind of GoPro area where you could stick a GoPro there on that flat little section on the body. Some more realistic touches here. The paint scheme on these UDRs are, are very nice, very impressive, which is kind of typical Traxxas really. And you've got the nice beadlock, fake beadlock looking uh, wheels and tyres. A extra drive shaft there, which is actually, actually a usable spare part. And you've got the nice little scale accessory. So, Again, the things that, that make this stand out a bit as a kind of standalone vehicle. There isn't really another short course truck, especially of this size or even possibly smaller, that has these features. So if that's the kind of thing you like, then really the UDR provides it. And that's what I like about the UDR. It's that little bit different from other offerings. Again, you've got that massive shock action at the back, very nice and soft and well, in general, all over there you go, you can see a bit of the, the kind of amount of articulation you have. And you've also got the, the scale accessories, the, the double wheels and tyres, again, which are usable spares on the back there. And, of course, the solid rear axle. And, and the tyres, which are a branded BF Goodrich tyre. So, again, you've got that feature. So, but the, scale, the solid rear axle, again, is something that is not really being done too much by other brands. There's a few, but not, not many. And again, that don't really combine it with this kind of scale, such a scale look. Battery tray is a bit of a, a bit different. You are limited a bit in size. It has this over tray which clips on. And then you've got a main clip that keeps your batteries in, your lipos in. And you have got the proprietary kind of Traxxas plugs there. I'm using an adapter to go to EC5s. And the tray itself, I actually did do a little kind of bit of sanding, you can actually almost see there with a, a Dremel, just to get a few millimetres more in there, because my, my 5,500 milliamp hour 3S packs wouldn't fit. I did get them in in the end though, so you are slightly limited in size there, so be aware of that. Check out the battery sizes. Uh, I was using some Flurian 5,500 milliamps, and they did just about squeeze in, they're the packs there. Uh, the four S's and, uh, that I had fitted fine, so that wasn't such an issue. So, going to, on to a bit of off-road use here. Now, I, I did use the car, this is 4S by the way, I used the car on grass initially. Now, I didn't film that. That was shockingly bad, I have to say. It rolled like mad with, 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 with the grip grass grips. I mean, you can already see here, it does roll. It's a feature of that scale look. It's narrow compared to some RC cars. And as a result, it rolls at the end of the day. It's, it's very scale looking, but you get that, that amazing, soft, high speed, um, absorbing suspension. You don't get on, on, on all, all rigs, and I really like that from the UDR. In, the, in these, this situation, it was really in its element. But yes, anyway, going back to the grass, it was horrific 
on grass. So in a big open field with some mates and their fifth scales, I had this out and it was terrible. It was shockingly bad and I was like, oh my God, what have I bought here? But then I took it here with a bit more of a slippery surface, still massive rolls all over the place, but it much, much more suited the car. It jumped actually very well. I was quite pleased with the way it jumped. And it just absorbed this bumpy surface really well. And in the slick areas where it was kind of gravelly and slippery like this, it was perfect. And you could do some nice drifts. That solid rear axle, I believe it's locked at the rear. So you get this kind of easily to spin out, drifty kind of handling which was really good fun and you could eat once you got the hang of it you could start kind of drifting in circles like this quite nicely and quite smoothly but then again it, it, it handled badly in other situations again going to the grass something like you've got the new armor Mojave being a non-solid rear axle truck independent suspension based more on let's say a truggy maybe the armor Creighton it's going to hand, out-handle this, this uh, UDR in every area, I would imagine. But you're not going to get that kind of scale look that you get from the UDR. So this is going on to 6S now. It shows you a bit more the kind of top whack with standard gearing that you're going to get out of it. And it's pretty fast. I thought it was more than fast enough. And doing some crazier jumps here. Stuff that really a truck like this isn't particularly designed for. Uh, abusing it a bit really, but uh, the jump was there, so I thought I may as well go for it. It did take all this abuse until things started to go wrong, of course, with a few heavy landings. Basically, the rear sway bars, the shock links, or the rear arm links here, they're known to be a weak spot, and they bent like bananas, so that was that, was that fairly expected. There was the, again, fairly well-known leaky shocks going on, so that is a bit of a shame. Not massive leakage, but just a bit of a weep. And basically, the drivetrain locked up. But I did discover it wasn't the drivetrain that locked up at all. It was actually the hubs. The, the, the hex hubs on this are plastic. They've got, kind of got a disc, a fake disc shape. And then they've got a plastic hex. And what had happened is those heavy landings had actually smashed that plastic hex into the pin, the drive pin, which is inside there. And I literally could not get them off. I, they're the rear hubs. I could not get those hexes off. It also snapped the just round the rear hub there, because they're very small, where the bearing sits. And it broke that. So what I did is I replaced those for metal from, I think it was Asia Tees or eBay. I got some from China, some metal rear, little rear hubs and the actual hexes. So I replaced them for metal as well. I think it probably cost me about 20 pounds, nothing too crazy. And that was a definite upgrade that's well worth looking at doing if you're doing some maybe slightly heavier jumping. But I think a general upgrade really. The other thing I did was I changed those banana shaped links for a thicker aluminium link which uh, I'd seen on other people's videos that was a, a kind of re reasonable upgrade. Not the Traxxas part, which was pretty expensive, but just, a, again, a Chinese-ordered part from eBay, I think it was, that was a reasonable price. I think, again, about £20. So I spent about £40 on upgrades, fitted those, and I shoe up the body cracks, and then I sold it. So they're the parts. Basically, this is another vehicle that went in my swap deal for a, another car. I swapped four cars for one, which is the UDR, my Armour Creighton, the Armour Limitless, and my Rovan Q Baja Shorty. So they've all gone, and I've got another car, which I'm gonna show you soon, what I actually swapped it for. But yeah, so, quick review video. The UDR, in, in summary, do I recommend it? Yes, I do. If you're after something scale, a scale basher, which has some interesting features. And I literally stripped the UDR down after that run to its component parts and rebuilt it again, cleaned everything up and rebuilt it. And I was really impressed by the amount of parts that go into making a UDR. 
it's a complicated rig. It's got a lot of, you know, there's, there's a cage, there's the way everything goes together. It's very impressive. Traxxas have done a good job with it, and I can see why it's not cheap, because there's a lot of bits to make a UDR. And it's not just a truggy or, or a, a buggy flat plate, flat chassis, uh, aluminium chassis with, with a, a short course body on it and some short course wheels and tyres and bumpers. That's not what it is. It's a totally different thing. It's very scale and it's got a lot of impressive features. So in taking it to bits and rebuilding it, I realised what goes into it. And it made me think, yeah, OK, fair play. This is a, a reasonable amount of money for quite an impressive RC car. It's good enough just to look at. You can pretty much look at it and just enjoy looking at it and looking at that soft suspension. Then you got the driving. On grass, it was poor. I gotta say, I'd say, I'd say, uh, it's hard to say horrific, but I'd say it was very, very poor handling. Straight line speed, okay, but throw a turn in there and you're in trouble on grass. On a, on a smoother surface like tarmac, and maybe with a bit less grip, and maybe add a little bit of gravel in there or dust, or as you saw there, a kind of off-road surface that's got a bit of slip to it, then you're in a much better place because you won't have that edge grip that's going to flip the car over so much and you can get away with a bit more drifting, which kind of suits it down to the ground. I've also seen it with sand paddles on on the beach and it looks massive fun there. So I think if you're after something like this, there isn't really a massive competitor to, the, to this UDR if you want the solid rear axle. So I would say, yes, I do recommend it. It's a fun truck. It's one of those trucks that if you really like RC, you really like scale, you're going to like this. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy. See ya.